All right, it's me today. <laughs> You're welcome. We're going to continue with the frazzling, okay? Uh, so this morning, we're talking about this I Am series. It's talking about who Jesus is really. And in the book of John, Jesus literally tells us exactly who he is. He's like, I am this. I am that. Like, there's no questions. He tells us who he is. And I love that about Jesus. He's just going to let us know how it is. Um, and so this morning, I thought I would let you know who I am, all right? I'm a lot of things, right? I'm kind of funny sometimes. Um, I can be kind when needed. Uh, <laughs> I have a shirt that says, make kindness normal. And the last time I wore it, I was not thinking kind thoughts. And my friends happily reminded me of the shirt I was wearing. Um, so that's annoying. Get you some good friends. Uh, and one thing that I'm not proud of is I am late. Um, I'm late often. Um, it's a chronic condition. I'm getting a doctor's note for it immediately. Um, but it, it really just doesn't make sense why I would be late because I was raised by someone that is 100%, 1,000% always early. All right. Um, my mom is very disappointed in my lateness choices, but it's not a choice. It's a sickness. All right. I swear I get up in plenty of time. I'm like, I got to be there at this certain time. I get up in time and then... I just don't know what happens. Like somebody just presses a fast forward button. I, I don't know. It's unfair really. And like I said, I'm going to get a doctor's note um, for it. Like my mom is the early arriver. Like she would drop me off at school and it would be like 701 and I'm the only child there. Like the teachers are not there. And I'd be like, mm -hmm. okay, great. You know? Um, so I wanted to start off this morning with a question for you is, uh, you've ever been late to something? Oh, great. You're going to respond to me today. Great. We're not going to act like we've never been late, right? Um, how about this? Have you ever been late and missed out on something because you're running late? We don't want to admit to that, right? Um, like the other day, for example, um, I get these weird cravings for Subway. It's like random, like it doesn't make sense. It's just a sandwich. But for some reason, my brain's like, that sandwich is 200 times better than the sandwich you about to make, go to Subway. And um, I'm a millennial and so I'm poor, right? So I can't just go to Subway when I want to, but I got these coupons, right? And I've been baking on these coupons. I've had them on my refrigerator and I finally was in the mood for Subway. You can't just go to Subway when you're not in the mood or else it's not good, right? Thank you so much, Scott. Everybody, let's give Scotty a hand. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> and so I've had these coupons on my fridge. I'm finally in a great mood to go get Subway. I go to look at all the different, I mean, there's lines. You get them in your mail, you know, and they make you feel like you're paying less. It's probably the same amount, but I'm like tricked into it. And I'm like, I'm going to use my coupons, you know. And so I'm looking through my coupons. I'm like, ooh, I can get a free cookie if I use this one. I'm about to cut it out. And at the very bottom in the fine print, always read the fine print print because it's expired. I was late and I missed out on the miracle of a beautiful Subway sandwich. It was quite the bummer. And so this morning, what does this have to do with anything? You know, I always bring it back. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want to jump right into our scripture this morning because I'm going to tell you a story that I promise you, you've never heard because Jesus is late. He's too late for a miracle. Y'all already fired me. I understand that, but we'll get to that later, okay? So today we're going to be in John chapter 11, all right? And I need to set the stage a little bit for you. You're going to meet three people in this story today. You're going to meet Lazarus. Some of you already know. You're going to meet Martha, and you're going to meet Mary. Now, they're all a part of the same family. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are siblings. I don't know that life. I'm, a, I'm an only child. I nearly said I'm a single child. Um, I don't know that life, but I imagine that you love your siblings a lot until they make you mad, right? Um, but Mary and Martha in this story have a very deep love for Lazarus, and you're going to see that um, once we begin the story. And obviously, our main most important character is Jesus. All right. So what's going to happen? And John, uh, he doesn't he doesn't sugarcoat anything in this story. The very first thing that when you open to chapter 11, it says that Lazarus is sick. More specifically, it says, Lord, the one you love is sick. All right. So Martha and Mary send word to Jesus, your friend, the one you love a lot, a lot, a lot. He's sick. 
all right? Now, you need to know a little bit about Mary and Martha and Lazarus and Jesus, all right? They, obviously, by the wording of this, they send the, the word Lord in the, in the letter, I guess. So maybe they put it on a pigeon. I don't know how they sent word to Jesus. Um, they obviously didn't have cards back then. They, they didn't text him. They didn't have his number. I guess they weren't that good of friends yet. Um, but they refer to him as Lord, Right, and I, when I was reading that, I thought it was interesting because Mary and Martha and Lazarus are really good friends with Jesus, and yet they still refer to him as Lord. So that kind of gives you um, an, a look into the relationship with Jesus because he's their friend, but he's also their Lord. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. So they send word to Jesus and they say, Lord, the one you love is sick. Lazarus is dying. We need you now. Come quickly. We need you right this second. And I'm going to tell you that Jesus waits a long time to come. And he waits too long and he's too late for a miracle. You probably never heard that part of the story. He's too late. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there thinking you need a miracle? Begging, pleading, needing a miracle, and you're expecting Jesus to show up, but he's late? I've I've been there. (laughs) Actually, it's almost a year ago to the day that I was there. I had just um, finished up a job working at Intermission Bookshop. I was about to work full-time at this church. I was super stoked. And um, <laughs> it's April 1st, and I'm supposed to stop, start my job April 1st. And I call Scotty, I text him actually, and I said, this is not a joke. I am sick. I cannot start work today. You know, like, you don't want to be that person. It's the first day of work and you're already calling in, right? Um, but what Scotty and no one knew is that starting at midnight, I had thrown up every 20 minutes. And it was like someone had a steel toe boot on and was kicking me in my stomach and in my back. And I remember, God bless my roommate, because I went and woke her up and I was like, something's not right. And I remember being on the bathroom floor. I was like laying there because I'm dying. I literally felt like I was going to die. And I remember just crying out to Jesus, you've got to make it stop. You've got, you've got to show up. If you're not going to show up in any other time in my life, this would be the moment because I don't know if I'm going to make it. And he didn't show up. So if we go back to our story, when Jesus finally does arrive in Bethany, where Lazarus and Mary and Martha all live, Lazarus is dead. He's dead. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed inside. I'm always the Mary, right? Jesus is coming. I can see him, but I'm a little bit, I'm going to say the word pissed off. And so I'm going to stay inside because I'm a little bit angry. All right. My roommate Katie will always be big, nice with people. And I'm like, I'm not ready. All right, so I imagine that's the Mary and Martha situation here. Martha's like, okay, I'm the mature one. I'm gonna go outside and talk to Jesus. I know we're mad at him, but we're gonna go ahead and talk, have a conversation. Mary's like, "Uh uh-uh. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. I'm making that up. But I imagine that that's kind of like, you know, the the little bit of struggle going on. And uh, she says to him, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, not friend, Lord, She knows who he is. She knows who he is. Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It's heartbreaking. If you had been here, if you had been here, you can hear the desperateness in her voice of God. If you just would have shown up, Jesus, I know who you are. I believe in you. If you just would have shown up, we wouldn't be here. You can feel her rewinding the day's events and say, Jesus, if you just would have, if you just would have came, like when I said that we needed you, if you just would have came right then, we wouldn't be in this tragedy. How many of you have ever played the what if game in life? I've got a lot of what ifs or if onlys or if you just would have shown up or if I would have just been a minute earlier, 
If I would have just made that call, and you know, you know this, we can make ourselves sick by the different what ifs and if onlys in life. Jesus, if you had only been here, fill in the blank. I'm sure you can all fill in the blank right now. That would not have happened. And the next part is, is shocking to me because of his response, because of who I know Jesus to be. He seems a little bit insensitive. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. He's going to rise again. That should give her hope. I love Martha here. She's like, I know. I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Oof. Martha, Martha, Martha. I love her. You know, like, because here's the thing. She knows he's Lord, right? She understands that. She calls him Lord multiple times. And he's her friend. How hard is it to be honest with your friend when they've made you upset? And then you also, like, he's your friend, but he's also God in the same bod. And you got to tell him right then and there, like, you done just made me mad. This is what I think her response is in, in modern day terms, duh, Jesus. Like, come on, man. I already knew this. I'm not stupid. It seems insensitive, right? Your brother's going to rise again. And, uh... I think Jesus could kind of tell that she was a little bit agitated by that response. I imagine that her and Jesus maybe found a bench. I don't know if they have benches in biblical times. I mean, people got to sit down, right? I don't know. But I imagine they found some sort of bench to sit at. And Jesus sat next to her and, and he put his arm around her. And this is what he says to her. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. So you've sat through some of my sermon today and you're probably like, where are we going to get the I am statement, KV? <laughs> okay, we're here. I am the resurrection and the life. And many of us know what that word resurrection means because we've probably grown up in Christianity since we can remember. Or even if you're new to the faith, you've probably heard that R word before, resurrection. It's where somebody dies and they come back to life, right? And we almost always put this together with Easter. This story isn't an Easter time. I think one of the big misconceptions about resurrection is that we often think of resurrection as a one-time event. It only happens once and it only happens when Jesus comes back to life. But I'm here to tell you this morning that resurrection isn't an event. Resurrection is a person and resurrection is Jesus. And what I know about Jesus is that he's always right on time. So this morning, I kind of, we're doing vocabulary in my classroom. So anytime I can throw it in, we're talking about propaganda. It's where we're one. So I gave you some propaganda this morning and told you that Jesus was too late for a miracle. But if we rewind the story and we begin with that very first verse and where, where Martha sends word and she says, Lord, the one you love is sick. And Jesus, he didn't arrive for four whole days, right? And that's kind of what got, got us started. That's what made us real mad in the beginning, right? He waits and he's late. But what if I told you, well, really it's Bill's word because he told me that in Jewish tradition, when somebody died, they believed that their spirit lingered for four days. And after four days, the spirit finally left their body. So what I'm telling you is Lazarus wasn't just dead. He was dead, dead. He was dead, dead. He wasn't just one day dead. He's like four days old dead. All right. I know it's awkward. We're kind of laughing in this moment. Sorry. <laughs> it's just who I am. All right. He's dead, dead. And in Jewish culture, the only one who can raise the dead dead is God. That's what they believe. Only God can raise the dead dead. 
and Jesus shows up. Wow. So what if we begin to turn our what ifs and our only and our if onlys and only ifs into Jesus is? See what this story about, it's really not about Lazarus or Martha or Mary. It's about who Jesus is. And what he's telling them is he's saying resurrection and life aren't, they're not in the future. They're not in the future. They're here now. Jesus is saying, look, Martha, your, your brother, I nearly called him her son. <laughs> that would be weird. Martha, your brother will rise again. Now. Not in the future. Now. He is now. In the future, it doesn't work like that. He's here now. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. It's not in the future. You understand that? I'm going to say it over and over and over again. It's not in the future. God is not going to resurrect you in the future because he can do it right now. He can do it right now. Jesus is here right now. You don't have to wait. People in that time, they were waiting for something amazing to happen. They were waiting. They knew something was going to occur. And Jesus is like, I'm here now. You don't have to wait anymore. I'm here now. And he's still here now. Still here now. And I want to tell you this morning that Jesus isn't too late. I started this morning telling you a story about how I was on my bathroom floor, pleading with God, pleading with Jesus, you've got to make it stop. And that morning, it was April 1st, and my mom works at a bank. Katie had to go to school. And at six o'clock, I called my mom and I said, I'm so sick. I don't know what's wrong. I've never been this sick before in my life. And she's like, it's the first of the month and I work at a bank. <laughs> but I, I like, I was, <laughs> you don't understand her, her, her struggle because everybody comes in at the first of the bank and she's, she's busy and she's great at her job. If you need a new bank, this is National Bank. I'm not paid for that. That's just a promo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right. And uh, she says, this is something your dad's going to need to take you to. <laughs> and I was like, no, ma'am. <laughs> I need you. Like, I'm serious. I was so nauseous that the world was spinning so fast. I was like, I know I, know I can't make it. And so she went into work probably an hour early. She got her day all set to go and she comes to pick me up. And I have this ghetto bowl with a trash bag in it because I... I don't know when I'm going to throw up next. And we go there and they're like, oh yeah, there's a terrible stomach bug going around. Let me, let me give you a shot of Finagrin and I'm going to give you a prescription of it too. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. It's almost done. And I get home and I throw up again. And I was like, it's not done. It still wasn't time for my miracle. And I throw up literally the rest of the day. It's four o'clock in the afternoon and my mom shows up at my house and she's like, we're going to the ER. Now I am a frequent visitor of a Brownwood emergency room. If it's not me, it's my roommate. <clears throat> we're there often. <laughs> Listen, they should have frequent flyer miles or something. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and I'm nervous because if you know Brownwood ER, you're going to be there a while. I mean, that's just, that's just it. You know, it's the only ER for miles, right? And it's Thursday and it's four o'clock and I know it's gonna be busy. We get in there, there is not a soul in that waiting room. I've seen in 10 minutes. And you know, if you've been to the emergency room, you know the real waiting doesn't actually start in the waiting room, it's in the room in the back and they don't ever come check on you and you're like, I'm gonna die here. Within the first five minutes, I had three doctors in there, nurses in there. They started an IV. They started running all these tests because they didn't know what was wrong with me either. And I kid you not, I don't know if it was the drugs, but I remember a doctor coming in there and hitting the bottom of my foot and saying, does that hurt? And I said, yes. And he said, where? And I said, in my back. And he said, you have something wrong with your kidney. And I was like, how did you know? 
<laughs> like, is that connected? You know, what I, it's funny now. It wasn't funny then. And uh, they said, you have a kidney infection and a kidney stone is stuck and it's not going to roll away on its own. And I'm like, cool, great, awesome. How much is this going to cost? <laughs> so uh, I get done in the emergency room. They're going to admit me into the hospital. And the nurse says, you're lucky. And I said, no, I'm not. Im dying. And she said, um, cause this is after Hendrix took over. And I don't know if you know this, but Hendrix is, is a Christian hospital and they were going to shut down surgeries because it was Easter and they kept it open. They kept it open for me. That was my miracle. Jesus isn't too late for miracles. They obviously drained out my kidney. I don't have a kidney stone anymore. It's been a year. I am the most hydrated person you will ever meet because <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to throw up that much again. It's never too late for Jesus' miracles. And I, I'm sorry if you haven't seen yours yet. I'm sorry if, if you've needed a miracle and it's, it hasn't happened yet. He's not late. He's right on time. He is the resurrection and he is the life. He is here and it is coming. I don't know when. There are some of you in this room that I don't know your struggles and there are some of you that I do and I want you to know he's right on time. It's never too late for his miracles. And I'm sorry that I got mine in that moment of need. And maybe you've been waiting for years and years and years. And this story is nothing but trash to you because you've been waiting for longer. And all these years pass in our lives and it's just a second in Jesus's life. And that's so frustrating, but I want you to know, even if it's 50 years from now, even if you don't see it on this side of earth, I promise you your miracle is coming. If your only miracle is that Jesus is alive today, it is a freaking miracle. So this morning, I wanna challenge you. I wanna challenge you to turn your what ifs, turn your if onlys, take your dead deads, and you're way too late and substitute them with Jesus is. If you don't know the story of Lazarus, if you don't know how it ends, Jesus tells Martha, go get your sister Mary, bring her out. <laughs> she literally says to Mary, the teacher wants you. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you were a troublesome student like me, but uh, if they say the teacher wants you, it's not good. The principal's here. Ah. <laughs> and Mary comes out and he, he says, you know, whatever he says to her. And he, she says back, if you had only been here. And you know what Jesus does next? He weeps. He cries. Because you know what? His friends are hurting. His friend has died. And he's sad. Death is sad. Death is sad even for Jesus. He doesn't like it. He doesn't want it. And he says, go find the body. Show me the body. And they get there and they're about to roll away the stone. And they're like, Jesus, homie, he's been dead, dead for four days now. He's going to be disgusting. And he raises him back to life. I don't know what happens to Lazarus after that. I tried to, you know, like Google it. I don't know. <laughs> but that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He still is. I can only be funny sometimes. When I'm sad, I'm not funny, you know? I hope I'm not always gonna be late. Someday I'm gonna get my life together. Jesus is, he doesn't change. It is who he is. He can't deny who he is. He is the resurrection and he is the life. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. In other words, dead, dead don't mean dead, dead with Jesus. <laughs> dead, dead don't mean dead, dead with Jesus. I was going to say dead, dead, ain't dead, dead with Jesus, but I thought, you know, I'll make it more grammatically correct if I can. 
And there are some of you in this room this morning that have labeled part of your life, your life dead, that Jesus isn't going to show up there. There's never going to be a miracle here. Some of you are in the midst of so much pain right now. And I want you to know that dead, dead don't mean dead, dead with Jesus. He is who he says he is and he is coming and he is here now. But do you trust him enough to come? Do you trust him enough to take your dead, dead and make it alive, alive? Do you trust him enough? So if you're here this morning and you're waiting on a miracle, I want you to know it's coming. I can't give you a timeline because I don't know. Sometimes miracles happen right in front of us and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it's amazing. And some of us are still watching that miracle and saying, but when is it my turn? I don't know. All I know is that he is who he says he is. And dead, dead ain't dead, dead with Jesus. Let me pray for you. God, we just thank you for um, allowing us to learn more about you, God. And the fact that who you say you are doesn't ever change. From beginning of time to the end of time, you are the same God. The same God that delivered Lazarus from his death and uh, overcome that. And then you overcame your own death. Because dead, dead don't mean dead, dead with you. God, I pray for anyone in this room right now that is needing a miracle, that's begging, pleading for a miracle, God, that you're close to them because they need you. Remind them, remind us that when we need our miracles, that you are who you say you are right now. We don't have to wait. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, come back next week. We still got more I am statements. We'll see you soon.